Good afternoon. Yesterday I did the book of John and I couldn't stop at chapter 13, but I went all the way up to chapter 17 because it was all one evening. It needed to be told together as one evening. So today I'm doing Matthew chapter 13. And there's a lot of going back. We've, done, we've heard these things before, but there are not enough times that we can actually hear them so that they settle in our spirits. So this was the, night, this was the same day when Yeshua's mother and brothers came <clears throat> to meet him. And someone went in and told him, your mother and brothers are outside. And he said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? But those that do the will of my father. So it's the same day. And it says, on the same day, Yeshua went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him. So he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Can you even imagine that? Can you imagine someone um, sitting on a boat outside Juhu Beach and the whole beach is full of, of people listening? And he spoke many things to them in parables. Parables are stories. It is much easier for us to remember things when they're told to us through a story than they are when they're told to us as facts or as statements. Um, we remember stories better than we would have remembered it if someone just gave us a, a series of facts to remember. We remember them because of the story. Sorry. Okay. And so he said, Behold. Behold is basically like saying, Look, observe. A sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. The birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they didn't have much earth. And they immediately sprang up, but because there was no depth of earth, when the sun came up, they were scorched and they died. They withered away. Some fell amongst thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. What do you think the seed was? and Who do you think the sowers were? And what do you think the ground that the seed fell on was? Could it be our hearts? Some are stony. Some are filled with thorns that prick us and worries and cares of the world. And some on, what was it? And some on, by the wayside, on paved, paved roads. The birds ate them. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak in parables? And he answered, saying, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Therefore I speak to them in parables, seeing because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, and nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you, hear, you will hear and shall not understand, seeing you will see and not perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull, 
their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. They hear. For assuredly I say to you, Many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see and to hear what you hear and did not hear. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside but he who received seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received seed among thorns is he who hears the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it and indeed who bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Tares are um, weeds. When the grain sprouted and produced a crop, the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares, bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. This is heavy, isn't it? The wheat and the tares the wheat and the weed grow together and it is only at the time of judgment that they will be separated and we will know the wheat from the tares. Another parable he put forth saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least, the smallest of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than all the herbs and it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Then he gave another parable and he said, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Leaven is yeast, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, which is atta. Um, flour until it was leavened until it the yeast had done its work and it had risen all of these things Yeshua spoke to the multitudes in parables and without a parable he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. 
And Yeshua sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. And he said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather, gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and the gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who, when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the goods into the vessels, but they threw away the bad. So it, will, so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth and separate the wicked from the just and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeshua said to them, Have you understood all these things? And they said, Yes, Lord. And he said, Therefore every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasured things, new and old. It came to pass that when Yeshua had finished these parables, that he departed from there. And when he had come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And are his sisters, are they not all with us? Where did this man get all these things? And they were offended at him. But Yeshua said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do mighty works there because of their unbelief. I just want to read a little bit, since we have a little time, from uh, the message. The same thing that he said. And Yeshua said, oh, that's Mark, sorry. Matthew. You've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works, but not everybody has this gift, this insight. It hasn't been given to them. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and understandings flow freely. But if there is no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. That's why I tell stories, to create readiness, to nudge the people toward receptive insight. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and still not see it, listen until they're blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast repeated all over again. Your, oh, yes, and then he tells us what Isaiah said. And then he says, When anyone hears news of the kingdom and does not take it in, it remains on the surface, and the evil one comes and plucks it right out of that person's heart. The seed that is cast in gravel, this is the person who hears, instantly responds with enthusiasm. But there is no soil of character. And so when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. 